when did you become aware of that actually taking criticism, as you put it, is actually a, a good thing as opposed to a negative thing? That's something I don't think I realized was something, you know, which was a skill I learned in skating that I needed to foray into my everyday life, mm. probably only within the last kind of 10 years. And I'm okay. way better at taking criticism in some facets of my life than others. Yeah. I think we yeah. all, it's all difficult for us to take criticism in our interpersonal relationships with our family. Okay. But, you know, I think that's a different type of criticism. <laughs> Is the process not the same though? It is, so but it, it comes from a different place from those that are closest to you, okay. I think. So it's okay. easier to take way? it more personally. Whereas, okay. you know, if it's coming from a coach or from a professional, in a professional way, mm. it's easy for me to understand that like business is business. Okay. You know, sometimes I might take things away and have a, a bit of a closer think about it. But, you know, business is business. And if you need a, a bit of coaching or constructive criticism along the way, it's important to take that and, and you know, swish it around in your head and make sure you just improve from it and instead of letting it you know just completely block you and yeah. make making you come to a standstill so yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. definitely a skill but from your family different scenario <laughs> your, your, i don't know your parents, Ask- <laughs> your, your husband <laughs> yeah. your siblings <laughs> yeah it's a work in progress <laughs> and it's something that actually it's something that i've been trying to instill in my kids okay. you know i'm not trying to be mean to you i'm just yes. you need to be able to take these yes. things and, and improve i'm i'm just I'm not just trying to be mean mummy. I'm trying to help you. So as a parent of four children, I am subjected to criticism, especially <laughs> because, right, because my oldest is 20, my youngest is 15. Okay. So they're really, really close together in age. Yeah. But they are definitely old enough to give me their opinion. Yeah. So their opinion is around what I wear, things that I watch, yeah. like, like the whole thing. Yeah. And what I've learned, I think, as a parent, maybe you've learned this the same, is my kids do not listen to what I say, but they listen to everything I do. You are absolutely right. I think especially for kids, they, they might get, I don't know how to term it, maybe lesson in getting talked out fatigue. Yes. Because they get it at school. Do you do that as your mu- as oh. a mum? Like, do you do the whole 20 minute lecture and you're like, oh wow, how much time's passed? I try not to because <laughs> I'm pretty hyper aware. You know, I have one child we talked about. I do have one child with dyslexia and I know he gets very fatigued at school. He really has to concentrate and he comes home incredibly tired. So I, I think I'm pretty hyper aware of mm. not doing the whole talk 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 because they just don't have the capacity to hear it anymore but Mm. so i totally agree with you in that Mm. actions speak louder than words in some instances so yeah that's my hardest lesson as a parent (laughs) so kind of going back to that feedback that was one of the things that i've learned and proactively try to work on yeah it's um, it's it's difficult because you want to you want to be able to just talk to them but you have to remember that they're just children and it's difficult it's always a balance